ready to get started on our, let's see, third now, um, Tappy Press virtual launch party. As we've said before, there's kind of a lot of our events aren't being able to be held in person this year. So a lot of times when we are able to uh, show you guys our books and learn more about it, we're not able to do that this time. So what we decided to do was to bring the books to you virtually. So we have, um, this is our third one of four of some of our new releases uh, for, from Tappy Press. And so we'll go ahead and get started without further ado. And um, right. as always, I guess I'll have to start us out by uh, introducing myself and our guest here. So. Like I said, this is our third Tappy Press virtual book launch party. I'm your host again, Kristen Whitman, Tappy Web Content Manager. Um, I'm very happy to be joined today by John Holton, the editor of Guidelines for the Safe Assessment and Operations of Yankee Dryers, which was recently released and published by Tappy Press. So thanks for joining me today, John. Yeah, good to be here. So I'd like to thank our virtual audience. As I shared at the beginning, we are sharing our interview meeting with uh, Facebook Live. So we know you're all busy, so we're happy you're here today. And um, as before, as we've done in the past um, with these virtual launch parties, uh, we will be giving away a free ebook um, of guidelines for safe assessments and operations of Yankee dryers at the end of this session, at the end of the interview. So if you could just please uh, like, share, or leave any comments that you have for John on this post, um, we can include you in that drawing. And at the end of the session, after we ask some of our interview questions, we uh, might be able to, to address some of the comments. So add those in that section as well. So without further ado, I will go ahead and get us started by introducing everyone to my guest. John Holton has over 35 years experience in the tissue industry. His position ha positions have included management roles in production, engineering, maintenance, and Yankee dryer services. He is currently a technical support and service coordinator for North America. John has been a TAPI member since 1985. He's involved with TAPI Tissues Division, including serving on the Yankee Dryer Safety and Reliability Committee. So I know that can be weird hearing your bio straight to you, but thank you for joining me today, John. Yeah, yeah, great to be here. It's kind of early on your end, so hopefully you're awake and ready for some of my interview questions. I've had my second cup of coffee. We're ready to go. Sounds good. You and I both. So, so I guess... <laughs> Start now, we just want to get a feel for the guidelines for the safe assessment of operations in Yankee Dryer book. So do you have kind of, I guess, an elevator pitch or sales pitch to kind of give to the audience that we have today? Yeah, yeah. Uh, first, we, we looked at this and we've been talking about it for a few years. And by the time we, we published this new book, which, which uh, I'll explain a little bit later, took us some time to put together. But um, we had the guidelines for safe operation of Yankee dryers, 1986. So it's 34 years old. And then we combined it with the other publication of guidelines for safety and condition assessment published in 1992. So again, this is 28 years old, uh, 34 years old, 28 years old. Some, some people uh, in this industry that need this reference were just born then, right? Um, computer graphics didn't exist. So many of the drawings were literally hand drawn. Um, and, and then of course there was no, no such thing as Microsoft Word. So trying to piece everything back together over the years and get it into a, a, a revised content with improved graphics really and improved explanations. It was just much simpler to do it and it makes it more uh, timely for today's audience. The second thing is, back when these books were published, I only knew of one steel Yankee dryer in the world, built by a German company, and there was only one. And today there's over 300 steel Yankee dryers operating in the world, and deliveries of steel Yankee dryers now outpace cast iron dryers. And of course, nothing in these guidelines addressed anything about the unique um, conditions or inspections that you do for steel Yankee dryers. So we were also be able to take this new technology of steel Yankee dryers and combine it with cast iron and, and point out the things that are very, very similar and then point out the things that are different with steel dryers. And finally, back when these were first, these publications were first issued, crevice corrosion, um, was a big, big problem in the industry and a lot of content was all about crevice corrosion. Well, we've solved that problem now with engineering. 
So we don't need so much of that information anymore because it's simply not applicable. Uh, but back then it was the biggest thing to us in the world was solving that problem. Today it's, um, it's nearly unheard of unless it's a very, very old cast iron dryer. So yeah, those are the kind of the differences and why the update was um, really necessary from the committee. Yeah, so um, like you mentioned, this is a combination of two books from the late 80s and early 90s, so it's been a while, so I'm sure there was a lot of updating that was needed. There was a lot of overlap in those books, so we could get we can get rid of the redundancies. Oh, absolutely. So I'm not sure, but um, did you at all work on any of the previous editions of those, those two, first two editions? Yeah, I joined the Yankee Dryer, what was a subcommittee at the time, in 1990. So I, it, I joined after the first book was published. Um, the second book, I was involved in just sitting down in the editing of it all. And it took three days. It was very different then. Everybody flew to Philadelphia, where the editor, Bill Corboys, was headquartered. And we went into a hotel and we wordsmithed it line for line for line. Uh, and content, and it took days. Um, so I was involved in just the final editing part of that, but not the uh, content part of that. But it's very, very different the way it's done, of course, nowadays. Right. I was going to say that doesn't sound much like how I would imagine an editing would go now. <laughs> you, to, nowadays, if you try to put 12 people on an air, you know, into Philadelphia for a week, your boss is going to say, no way. You know, we just don't do that anymore. Yeah, so um, this was a project of the Yankee Dryer Safety and Reliability Committee. So how did that mm -hmm. work with you all getting together and doing the content and the editing? Because there were multiple of you, but not being able to go into one room for a whole week. How did that work this time? Right. Well, this, this was the, well, it'd be very different today than it was just a year or two ago. Our committee was used to meeting, uh, we'd meet in person every six months. And we would do the editing three or four hours on one side of that meeting or the other. So it went very, very slowly. And many of us have been around for a while. And the whole idea of Zoom meetings or uh, Microsoft Teams meetings, um, it really it isn't where it is nowadays, right? With the COVID, everybody's meeting this way. And we're all getting more comfortable meeting this way. And the software is getting better. So when we started this two years ago, we were still just meeting a few hours every six months and then kicking emails back and forth. Uh, it's slow. And in uh, today, what we would do instead, we'd have, a, we'd have a Zoom meeting or a Microsoft Teams meetings probably once a month and would probably get this thing pushed through in six or eight months instead of um, two years. And it would be more interactive and purely because of the convenience of the the team's meetings. Awesome. So took, you, this project took about two years with editing and all that? Yeah, it did because we only met in person in, in small periods of time every six months. And uh, so, yeah, so it went a bit slowly. Yeah. Okay, we got it done and it's there now. So, <laughs> And we got it done. And the idea now that, now that we have it out there is... It, it, to try to revise it in, in sometime in the next three to five year period. Because now everybody can see what we've written and we've asked everybody to send questions back. Hey, if you disagree with something, let's have the, the technical discussion about it. But we now have a basis for discussion um, with this new book. And the, the goal is to, to revise this in the next three to five years. And then it, then it probably won't need to be updated for another 10. Nice. That's always great. So, so the um, for those not familiar with the tissue making process, what role do Yankee dryers serve? This is going to be a lesson for me as well. All right, all right. Primarily um, in our industry, there's three processes. But so there's wet crepe, dry crepe, and then there's through air dry machines. Um, the only, the most common by far is a dry crepe machine. And the Yankee dryer is the only singular dryer um, on that machine. Uh, it also provides a surface for creping, which provides stretch and softness to the tissue. So it, 
it really, it, it has three main functions. It's part of a press nip, which removes water. Uh, then it's part of the, uh, the dry, it's about 50% of the entire drying process. And then finally it gives the, uh, the surface, the smooth surface to crepe the sheet and create the, the crepe and, and the stretch and the softness um, for the product. Just like last time, I don't know if you saw last uh, last week, but I had a lesson about craft recovery from Hongi Tran. And, and like I say, I don't know if I am the target audience for this, just being <laughs> the website of things. But if you did have to kind of name um, who would be the target audience for this book, who would you say that would be? Oh, okay. Um, in the book, and well known within the Yankee Dryer um, group, is the acronym YRP, Yankee Responsible Person. Most mills uh, have a Yankee responsible person because if you don't, then no one's responsible. And this is a critical asset. Uh, very few people have spares for them. Some of the big corporations do. So if you lose the asset, it's it, whether you have a spare or not, <clears throat> it can be catastrophic. Um, so I would say YRPs, <clears throat> they can exist at the corporate level. But every mill should have one, even if you have only one Yankee dryer, someone needs to be assigned that responsibility. So YRPs, maintenance managers, maintenance planners, uh, corporate engineering as a reference guide, and then insurers. And there's insurers, both corporate people who are responsible for insurance of their um, company. They may be self-insured, like a very large company may be self-insured. Other companies purchase their insurance through a large global uh, insurance company. Um, but every member who goes inside a Yankee dryer from that insurance company, and a lot of them are insured by the same, even around the world, insured by the same company. Every single person responsible for the inspections should have a copy. And if you look at the insurance guidelines, they mostly parallel what Kathy has written. So insurers both inside the corporation and out and then um ah one more comment about insurance anyway it escapes me at the moment but oh your local jurisdictions some um some states require um like i'm working in oklahoma at the minute and they had the department of labor ha labor has their own inspector well that person ought to have a copy of that book anyone who's an inspector uh, going inside or looking outside a Yankee dryer um, should have a copy because it goes through, you know, everything from A to Z around Yankee dryers and procedures, advantages, disadvantages. So I think the insurance people and the inspector people is a big audience we often miss. Inside, inside the tissue industry, I think everybody is pretty understanding of what content is in there and why they need it. With the insurance companies, um, and the insurers and the state inspectors uh, would benefit from this. Because often in my past, you get in there with a state inspector, they have no idea what they're looking at or why they're in there. And in, uh, that, so some education would really help them to know what to look for and do a better job as an insurance inspector. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. That's actually surprising <clears throat> the large audience. Yeah. What, what is yeah, and they're very unique pressure vessels. Uh, nothing else like them in the world. You have a pressure vessel that's rotating. It has one or two pressure roll linear loads against it. You know, there can be 18 to 20 feet uh, in diameter. So they're massive rotating pressure vessels. They can have 900 degree air blowing on them at high velocity. Uh, so there's, there's a host of risks with Yankee dryers that do not exist in other pressure vessels. So it's good to be to have this on your desk. So it's a unique publication. You can't go to ASME, you know, the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. They write, <clears throat> and we reference the parts of the ASME code that are applicable to Yankee dryers. Uh, but you can't just go to the ASME and find the guidelines, you know, regarding Yankee dryers, because they're quite unique. 
So this, like you said, this book was, it was a while before it was updated, almost 30 years or 30 years in the first edition, 20 yeah. something in the other. So there's a lot of updating I'm sure that needed to be done. And like you said, with the graphics and all kinds of stuff. So there was this, this book includes, uh, had five authors and a technical editor, right? Yes. Yeah. So how did you go about, I guess, selecting and working with the team to kind of get this? Yeah. Yeah. It, um, and we also had some, let's just say editor reviewers at the end as well. So I think we started with about 10 people and we created all the assignments. We had an outline of all the chapters and topics we needed to address and people um, got their assignments. But, but like every team, you know, people, they're enthusiastic, but then they find out they don't have the time. So over time, the, the, the 10 person team kind of became five. And then a, again, a technical editor. And once it was completed and, and it had gone back and forth through the emails, uh, we opened it up uh, for overall comments. And a lot of people gave great comments. And I just want to give a special thanks to the engineering team at Kimberly Clark because they really went through it and dotted the I's and crossed the T's. And it was quite a helpful um, edit from them at the end. And we, we had a handful of other edits where people sent in their comments. All of those were quite helpful. Great. So I am just over here looking at our, looks like we have a few more minutes here. We did, I, I'm a fast talker. It turns out you kind of, you pretty much are too. So we have a little bit of time left here. So I'm gonna check over on our Facebook Live to see if we have All any. Right comments for you to answer if you don't mind doing that for us. Sure. Let's see. Refresh. So again, I mean, I don't know if this is a good thing, but this will be the third time in a row that the, the only comments we've really had during our lives is the book looks great and great job and that sort of thing. So I'll take that as a win. How about you? Very good. <laughs> Very good. I, before I leave, I, I again, um, beyond the engineering team at Kimberly Clark, Bill Corboy was the original editor. And, and the book really, uh, I told you he was a real wordsmith, etc. So the book really contains a lot of his, his original. Uh, he was a mentor for me, and I'm, I'm happy to uh, uh, provide this update. So awesome. So I guess without that, that looks like our third press virtual party interview is a wrap. But as I mentioned at the start of the event, um, we're gonna, I'm going to be using a random picker um, after we hang up here to, to select from those that liked, commented, or shared on the Facebook Live um, to pick a winner of the free ebook. Um, and I'll make message you to make arrangements and that sort of thing. Um, but we also have some information. I did want to share my screen really quick to see if I can get this slide up. There we go. That is the first time that it's come up without me having to click around a hundred times. So I'll take that as another good, good luck. All right. Um, I win. Yes. So we do have a, a bonus going on right now since uh, this is our, our virtual launch party. We have a promo code for, you can use for party 25 to save 25% on your purchase of the, the book we've just discussed in this. And this, like I said, is our third of four. So if you want to find out more about um, that fourth, virtual live, you can go to tappy.org slash party, um, or you can also find more about John, about the book, um, and purchase from there that way as well. So without further ado, I guess I'll let you get your Tuesday back, um, John, but thank you again so much for your time and your, your listening and, and teaching me and, and the rest of our audience today. We do appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Christian. Appreciate it. Thanks. Talk soon. All right. Bye-bye.